Let's leave our conversation there and bring on our man Keith Pompey to talk about what happened last night. Sixers had their shot last night, man. They definitely had their shot. Keith Pompey, you were down at there at the Wells Fargo Center. Uh, tell me what I witnessed last night. You witnessed a beatdown, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was it was bad. Uh, the the thing about it is, I'm gonna be uh, honest with you guys. When I when when I heard the crowd, I was like under the impression that the Sixers were going to kill them. And I was telling people, like, yo, the Sixers are going to destroy this team. And next thing you know, like four minutes in, they're down they're down 12. And I'm like, what's going on, <laughs> right? I mean, the, the Sixers didn't get the memo. So then all of a sudden, you're like, okay, but Jason Tatum is struggling. The Sixers are going to come back. They're going to come back. They're going to do something. And what we witnessed was a choke job. That's what we witnessed. We witnessed the 76ers having a chance to pull off a thrilling victory in front of the home crowd, a chance to exercise some demons. Now, they still can do it in Game 7, but they had a chance to adorn it in Philly where Philadelphia was lit. And I've been to a lot of playoff games. That was the loudest I've been to in pregame. And no other way to describe it than they choked. I'm sorry, they choked. They choked. All right, well... Well, he, to me, the big stat is the last four minutes of the game, the reigning MVP of the NBA doesn't touch the ball. Mm -hmm. Whose fault is that? I think it's collective. I think that he needs to be more, give me the ball, give me the ball. Because if you notice, there was one point, and I believe it was in the third quarter, where Tobias Harris, Joel was standing underneath the basket and, and he had a, a favorable matchup. And Tobias swung the ball outside and it was a turnover or whatever the guy. And then going down, he let Tobias have it. He needed to do that late in the game. Give me the ball. I am the MVP. He had to. But also you got to blame the coach because it comes to a point in time where you got to start running some plays where stuff is going to go to this guy. Because the thing is they're down Nobody's making shots. We all know Joel is a um is a, is drawing the foul, waiting to happen. So you give him the ball. If he gets in spot, he does that move wherever he swings his arms, and then all of a sudden he goes to the foul line. Right? They needed something to give him a lift. So I'm blaming him for not like being more active, and I'm blaming the coach for not getting him the ball. I got to understand what Doc was doing last night. And I mean, you know, I've been the critical one on this show about that and questioning. But in all honesty, I've texted Jeff throughout this series. I thought that he had done a better job at times than Joe Missoula. Last night, I have no idea what he was doing from his rotations. Hold on a second. Game five, you you literally sent me a text saying Doc's going to get fired. Okay. The funny the thing was you won. were in something and it was when they lost the eight point lead before overtime. By the time you saw it, they had won the game. But I had okay. given him credit you, you to go you back previously. to your question. I, I just still, wanted to point out that the game they won, you texted. Don't worry. Be I'm going to get ahead. Uh, when, after we get through what happened last night, I'm going to get to Doc in game mm -hmm. seven and we can look at the disaster that that is. But Doc in game six, I don't understand what he did with his rotations. He's got the Anthony Melton playing about 17 minutes, can't shoot anything in the first three quarters, puts him in the fourth quarter. He misses three, four shots that lead to fast breaks. Tobias Harris plays 41 minutes, puts up two points. His last shot in the game was six minutes left in the second quarter. George Niang was the only person hitting shots last night, doesn't get on the floor. P.J. Tucker comes in and out. What was Doc doing? Yeah, I didn't understand that one either. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to take up for Tobias a little bit. Now, Tobias was horrendous shooting the ball in the first quarter. No, but where I'm going to take up for him at is you got to get the guy after a while when you see stuff not working, you got to get people involved. Like he didn't even touch the ball. He was just a one way player. I mean, they might as well for last night, they might as well say, hey, Matisse, uh, is there any way you want to come back? For a game? Why, why didn't Doc you, you me? Why didn't huh? Doc draw up a play for him to get him that's involved? What I'm saying. You got to draw up. A, you got that. That's you're right. You got to draw up a play for him. And they didn't draw up a play for him. So he just became a one-way player. Now, now here's the thing. In regards to Melton, I didn't understand that one. You know, P.J. Tucker, what was he, like three for something yeah. uh, um, from the field? 
So PJ three, Tucker's three. out of the game. You're like, oh, oh. Then all of a sudden, I stand up and I'm looking down on the bench to see if I see PJ. And I'm looking at my phone to see if the PR staff sent something saying PJ was hurt. Now, again, I know that PJ doesn't score a lot of points, but PJ, if we learned one thing about him, he's the emotional leader of this team, at least in the in the in the playoff, right? Getting in that Joel's face, getting guys up. He can't help him from being on the bench, especially when Melton was struggling. And then so you say to yourself, well, George Niang comes in and he gives you a lift. Well, sometimes they say you got to ride the hot hand, right? Keep going to him. He, they didn't. Now, again, I get it. You say they're attacking him on the defense, but I felt like they stuck with DeAnthony Melton too long. And like you said, his misses led to fast breaks the other way. And they were some bad misses, you know, um, and wide and open, bad, misses. wide open misses. Yeah. And that one guy was like, Divine Gibbons with him and I on our podcast. He's like, no, nah, he wasn't wide open. I'm like, yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> and and so the, the thing is, you know, you look at it and you say to yourself, like, wow, you're going to bring PJ in with 324 left. And you guys lost all the momentum. This guy been sitting on the bench for a while. He's probably upset because he hasn't been in the game. And now help us put out this fire. And to me, and then what? A minute later, he just called off the dogs and was just like, oh, we lost. You know, so to me, it was kind of like a waste. It was really a waste. It was a waste. You know, when you that go through this quiet. rotation, the one I'm, I'm just listening. You're you're on a roll. But but, you know, you, we look at this rotation and one of the guys that the Sixers traded for was McDaniels. He played one minute. One yeah. minute. We yeah. we got him for one minute in game six. Like why it, he either he's healthy and can play, which is he played, so he's healthy enough to play. If he's healthy enough to play, why is he not getting any play? I think they they, they soured on him, and in, in, well, I don't think they soured on him after his struggles in game three. It was a time he had a bad game, and then after that, that's when they went to D-House. Oh, no, before they went to D-House, they just went to nine guys, right? And then, mm -hmm. no, not nine, they went to eight guys. So then the all guys. of a sudden... So then all of a sudden, it's one of those things. They go to D House, and then I guess they didn't like what D House did because D House did miss a couple shots. They run out. But see, I think the problem with what they were doing is you can't have these guys playing on eggshells because D House is going to miss shots. But at the same time, he's going to, you got him out there, he's going to play with some energy, right? Now, the thing is, nothing against Melton. I like Melton. But he was the one that you stuck with when he was the one struggling. You know what I mean? He wasn't bringing any energy. He wasn't doing anything. So it was just a bad performance all around um, by the players and the coaches. All right. The big star that we had to get, that the, the general manager spent years trying to bring here, his line is 13 points, seven rebounds, nine assists, four for 16 shooting. Zero for six from three pointers with five turnovers. Is is this is this the legacy that James Harden is going to live now? Better hope he hopped on a plane to Vegas after the game last night before Sunday. <laughs> you guys <are> crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's, hey, by the way, you know Jason and I will disagree about a lot of things, but the fact is, he's only stating a fact. It's not <laughs> like James Harden at the beginning of the series. Didn't go out to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but look, the thing is, going to Vegas might might work for him right about now. Look, right? I'll, I'll you take know, a, I'll take anything right now. Yeah, I mean, go to, go ahead, bro. But anyway, so so here's the deal. I mean, I think like to be honest with you, I thought their new lineup was going to benefit him, the defensive lineup that they had, but it looked like it hindered him a little bit. Because now these guys, their their the guards were Brown and uh, Tatum. They didn't have, and then whenever they switch, now when they switch, then you got Rob Williams on or someone like that, right? So I felt right. like it was a tough matchup for them. Um, the problem is like they just got physical, and 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 they should have known better. Even James, they should have known that Boston was a desperate team, and they were going to come at you, and they were going to do stuff. The thing I didn't like is like they're that they were complaining about the fouls and all this stuff and the officiating. But the thing about James is, you know, James unfortunately 
you know, James will have a good game, then he'll have a bad game. I mean, under a couple of days. Now, the thing is, I think we were uh, – people were a little lucky or a little fortunate to see him have back-to-back good games, and then he had a bad – I mean, but if you notice, they speed him up, they get in his way, they try to do things, and and they, and they, and they, and they and the thing is, he's not getting the calls that he used to get. So he's not getting to the foul line. So they're just stripping him. And um, I don't know, man. I, you know, it, it, it just looked bad. It was a bad performance. It shocks me they didn't expect that because I was actually looking out. I was worried they were going to have Scott Foster on the game because he hadn't ref the night before. So when I saw the refs come out, you saw the commentary. It was a let them play crew before the game. You knew what you were going to get in that game on every level. And you saw sort of a little bit of a disagreement afterwards between Doc and Harden. Doc said it was a lack of trust. Harden said it's simple. It's not trust. We just have to make a couple shots. We celebrate different ball game. Is it? <laughs> you know what I took it as? Lack of trust means we playing hero ball. Uh, with Who was the hero? <laughs> I guess I get with lack of trust means they're not passing the ball. They're not doing this. I'll all of, I guess the ball was sticking. And I, and, and what James is saying is because they always, what James is saying is nah, what we did was nothing wrong with that. We just didn't make shots. And to me, that's alarming because basically you're saying like the coach is saying, no, you got to move the ball. And he's coming back and saying, nah, bruh, we just didn't make shots. You, you know what I mean? So yeah. that I didn't I didn't that makes like no that makes no with. sense though. Keith, it makes no sense to for 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 Harden to say it's not a lack of trust when you he didn't he's the point guard. He yeah. didn't pass the ball one time to Embiid in the last four minutes of a game six at home. That's a lack of trust, and it's playing what you're calling hero ball. Harden wanted to be the hero. Instead, now he's the GOAT and not the greatest of all time GOAT. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. I mean, it was a it was a bad, it was a bad display. I mean, I, I think, but I, you I'm not just gonna blame him. I mean, a lot of people laid clunkers in which was supposed to be the biggest game of their careers. You know what I mean? Which was the biggest game in the career it, it thus far. Was, it was the first time in this playoffs that it looked like the moment was too big for any of them. Some of them just looked like they were kind of overwhelmed. I mean, just looked off from the start. I, but I, it takes us to Sunday. The pressure on the players, the pressure on the coach. I'll ask the pressure on Doc. Uh, I mean, people know this is his 50th time in a Game 7 opportunity to close out. He's 17 and 32. He's six and nine all times in game seven. He hasn't won a game seven since 2015 and has never won a game seven on the road. How much pressure is on Doc here for this team to win this game? A lot. And it, it was always pressure because when you think of Doc and you hear Doc say, when I mean, you ask him like legitimate questions, hey, Doc, how big would it be for you guys to get out of the second round? Oh. Uh, we don't think about that, man. We're worrying about winning championships. You know, that that's a Philly thing. You know, that the Sixers haven't been out of out of the out of the second round since I was a uh, uh playing in the league, which is true, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But basically everyone knows that he hasn't been out of the second round for a long time either. And is also this is on his watch, right? So the monkey off your back. We all know that that's you know, you, you gotta get the monkey off your back. So this is a big, huge, um, you know, m- moment for him. So at the same time, so now we're talking about before they even get to game seven. Now, not only that, like the one stat that you didn't bring up and you brought up a lot of stats is that he's lost nine consecutive closeout games, nine consecutive closeout games in the second round. Right. You know, um, I think is that a record. Yeah, yeah, it's a record. It's a record. <laughs> he holds Not a lot of records for futility in closing yeah. out series in Game Seven. Yeah, Steph. nine consecutive he, he, in the in, in in the in the second round. He's so. lost four more Game Sevens than any other head coach. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now you you may say Doc players. I get longer, it. You know, but you may say he coached longer than people, right? So you know you're going to have mm-hmm. 
that number is going to be, you know, this and that. But when you say the one thing he says, nine consecutive closeout games, he lost them. So, yes, the pressure is huge, especially going back to Boston. And then you're going back to Boston and you're saying to yourself, man, I can't believe we let these, this team off the hook because Jason Tatum has been horrendous this series. He only turned around. He had two pretty good games. Well, one good game, and then he had a good fourth quarter, and that was the last mm -hmm. game, right? So you have to believe that this guy is like, whoa, I got my mojo back, and he's going to come out guns a-blazing, so to speak, right? With so, 525 left in the fourth quarter, he had seven points, and five of them were from the line. He finished hitting four three-pointers and outscored the Sixers in the fourth quarter, 16-13. to 13. You let yeah, them see, off the that's hook. Bad. That's bad. That's bad. I mean, I, you know what? I thought he was an Ohio State guy going up against Michigan for a second. Ah, oh, there it is. Keith. Oh, wow. <laughs> you didn't even wait for the end. You just decided to go right there. What are we going to see on Sunday? This isn't just a, a doc um, history of futility. The, the Sixers are 6-9 six and nine in Game 7s throughout franchise history. They've lost three straight Game 7s and are 2-4 and four against the Celtics. Um, you know... I want to be hopeful. Jeff hasn't had confidence all series. He's told me not to have hope all along. All series? I <laughs> all season. Before the season <laughs> yes. started. This, the this, is, this is where it ends. This is where it always ends. And to me, the question is, is if it ends on Thursday, on Sunday, does that mean this is the end of the process? Can we now call it a complete and utter failure if, the, if it ends it with another second round exit? I mean, I done already buried the process two years ago. People got mad at me. <laughs> I kind of revisited it again in today's paper. I mean, <laughs> talking about it, and they're, they, they're mad at me. I mean, the process, is, but it was a failure. I think this was a reboot, but this is kind of like, it's weird, man. It's kind If they go out there, you got to look at the Sixers, and, and I'm, I'm saying this kind of playfully, but, but also seriously. They're kind of cursed. Like, you know, like they're like, – the, there's a moniker, the same old, like the same sorry, but team, right? I mean, you look at it because this was supposed to be the season, like 54 wins. You got the MVP, first team all league. James Harden leads the league in assists, you know, and at one point during the season, they were the hottest basketball team, right? You did, they got the vaunted um, Boston Celtics on the ropes. If you look I, at it, them. what could I, come? If you look at it, if they could win, what could come next? You've already got the one seat out, and if they were to advance, they'd have yeah. home court for the finals. This is their chance. Exactly, they got everything, and then all of a sudden, throw a clunker, second round exit again. So it's, it's it's crazy. I mean, think about it. Like you say to yourself, you mean to tell me you got rid of Brett Brown, you upgraded this roster. You got James Harden. You done traded Ben Simmons. Okay, Ben Simmons is struggling. But you got James Harden, a guy who's been flirting with, with the Houston Rockets since since he's been – I mean, since the season started. And you're going to lose that. You're going to lose all these other things, all that, just for another second-round exit. You know what I mean? The only thing that's different is they just got more high-profile players. But they all do the same stuff. They choke in the big games. If they lose. Now, if they win, people are going to be like, hey, 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 finally did it. But if they lose, if I'm Josh Harris, the owner, I got to think long and hard what I'm trying to do moving forward because it's not working. It's not. It, it just didn't work. Oh, he's already got a plan. It's called by the commanders. And leverage the Sixers is debt for that, by the way. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that that's one of the things that the NFL is looking at, that he has – for the, the debt financing has put the Sixers and the Devils in with the Commanders, which uh, I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing, man? It's my team. <laughs> I mean, it's your team, but it's my team. So he's, he's, so he's pimping his squad. <laughs> That's what I read earlier. You could look more into that. But, I, I mean, he had a bad night the other night. He lost the Devils and the, the Sixers. I don't really care about the Devils. I care about the Sixers, though. Um, but, yeah, I right, just. Well, well so be, be, before we go to the, the rest of the league, because there are other games that are probably more exciting. When it comes to Game 7, will the Sixers come out even tighter than they came out in Game 6? Or are they going to come out with, uh, we got nothing to lose and everything to gain here and just come out gangbusters? No, I don't know. 
honestly, I don't know, man, because, you know, here's the thing. You would think, and going by past history, you would say, yeah, they would come out tight, right? They would come out tight. Mm -hmm. They would do whatever they can. But we always were saying to ourselves that this year is different. This is a different season. Like, they finally got over these uh, this hurdle, so to speak. They're, they're playing better. They're doing everything. And nothing that we saw yesterday said that. They went back and they looked like the same old Sixers. So that's the biggest question mark. And it, 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 maybe that's why everybody was so concerned when they went to Boston for game five, because you didn't know what you were going to expect. Like, you were so excited because – you're hearing that this team changed, but then all of a sudden it's like you know what the history is like. So then you got comfortable in game six, and then the old Sixers show back up. So maybe they may feel like we have nothing to lose, and they may come out and play freely, and the pressure could be on Boston. But I think the pressure is still on the Sixers, <laughs> you know what I mean, because they were up 3-2. So – I don't know. That's a great question, Jeff. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It concerns me because this would be the fourth playoff series loss with a Doc had a 3-2 lead. Did it three times with the Celtics. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the NBA playoffs. The Nuggets closed out last night, blowing out the Suns on the road. The second year in a row that the Suns have lost by almost 30 at home. I guess I could say it is an improvement. They got blown out by less at home than the previous like 25. year. Um, 25. <laughs> yeah, it's ugly. It wasn't, it was, they were down by 30 at the half. It wasn't close at any point during the game. Uh, then you got the Knicks and the Warriors both forcing game sixes. So. Well, wait, wait, wait. Don't just don't just skate by that game. The, 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 this is what everybody seems to be doing with the Denver Nuggets is just for, OK, it's the Nuggets. Like nobody seems to be giving them a shot. I think they're going to end they up in the just, finals. They just took care of the team that was supposed to be the odds on favorite in the West to get to the finals once Kevin Durant got there. Well, the question the, who, for for me, they were the favorites. I never thought they. Oh, were the every well, did. you didn't, but all Keith that's all I kept he heard, hearing from Keith the, has said the Warriors are his favorites, but Jeff thought the yeah, but Nuggets. right, but but the talking heads were all saying Kevin Durant to Phoenix. Now it's the whole right. thing. Well, what we found out was Chris Paul once again got hurt, which is what he always does in the playoffs. No matter how good he is, this is what happens. And DeAndre Ayton might be the second softest player behind Ben Simmons in the NBA. Yeah, like, that was bad. This was just bad. keeps happening. Like, the, yeah. like we knew they the Suns didn't even want to sign him to that big deal because they were concerned about this, and he didn't play with a rib contusion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he had a bruised rib. <laughs> yeah, but um, here, here's the deal: I never thought that that team was going to be that good anyway. Phoenix. I mean, I feel like Phoenix had a a nice young core. Uh, I get it that um Jay Crowder wanted to leave. But I felt like they should have traded him earlier and got someone and built it. Now, the thing is, the crazy part is, and it's something else that people were debating about last night. You know, the crazy part is you look at it and you say to yourself, like, so y'all gave up all these draft picks. Mm -hmm. And you got you got a, a for Kevin Durant and y'all still lost and still got blown out. Right. You know what I mean? And now you look at it and you're saying, wow, Brooklyn. <laughs> Okay, good, because now what they're talking about, now Phoenix is talking about we're trying to trade Chris Paul. We're going to try to shop Chris Paul. So you're like, so you How are you going to trade? Who's, who's going to take Chris Paul exactly. at, at his That's advanced age with the, the amount of injuries he has? He can't make it through a season, and it's not, it's not he's a great player, but, you know, your body starts to break down. And his I mean, breaks here's down the thing. How many playoff. draft picks do you have? Like, uh, you know, maybe, um, I don't know. Like Houston could use them as a rental, and then if there's oh god, team, Chris Paul and James again, Harden again, you want well, yeah, you want to well, well, go back, roll it back? Hard, if, if Harden's not there, I'm just this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> See what typically yeah. happens is a guy like that, you get him as a rental, and then he's there, mm -hmm. and then like there's a team that's going playing and they need a point guard to win a championship, and then you ship them there for some draft picks, right, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but it's to me, it's kind of like. You guys like did went all in and got rid of your young pieces because Chris Paul and and Kevin Durant is not going. They're not going to be there long. But you had right. Devin Booker and you had these two other young guys who could have been great pieces moving forward. 
but you got rid of them and you gave the same draft picks for them for like who basically essentially your second and third best players. You got rid of mm-hmm. those two for for uh for uh for Kevin Kevin Durant. Now get me wrong, if you win a championship is a great move, but then he gets hurt. And then it's like you look at it, they don't have any depth. And uh, you know, I still don't think Denver's the team to beat. Um, but they put it on them. They put it on them. The Knicks gonna be able to force a game seven, Warriors gonna be able <laughs> nah, to force a game over, seven. I think. Both nah. of those series over tonight? Um I hope so, because that means that the Sixers game seven is going to be at three thirty. I hope so. <laughs> it but, could be um, a Mother's Day massacre at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Look at wait you you you're hoping that so the game's earlier. It's yeah. either three thirty or eight, depending on. Yeah, congratulations, welcome to old people land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, He's like, you know when I have to file my story for an eight o'clock game. <laughs> you are literally making your decisions based based on making sure you can get the better of huh? Yeah, you're right. You're right about. That. I mean, yeah. you know, uh-huh. man, like you know, like the, you done that story yet? Uh, give me a couple. Give me a couple minutes. So, uh, so, so, so how many how many stories get written by you and others if the Sixers lose games? Seven and Jimmy Butler's in the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh God, the pain. Wow, I think you just gave me a call. <laughs> Ooh, it, it is good. It, it's going to be the most painful thing to Philadelphia Sixer fans is once again if Jimmy Butler. No, more painful would be more, the Sixers. more painful would be when Jimmy Butler eliminates the Sixers in the next round if they were both advanced. That you could know, be I, more I, but painful. If the Sixers would advance, I, if they do advance, I think they'll get Jimmy. I do. I do. Well, maybe not, but, but I, I, I do. I do. I never. Who's, who's going to guard him? Who, assuming, assuming if the Sixers make it to the next round, assuming they know to pass the ball to Embiid, who exactly is going to guard Embiid <laughs> on the Heat? Apparently, question. that's a big assumption now with this team. I never had that worry yeah, before. I mean, I, I said a whole bunch of assumptions there, but I still can't figure out how you don't see the seven see, foot the tall guy is, in the middle of the floor. You, the, the problem is that. Uh, Jason starts drinking that Kool Aid. <laughs> I do. Like, Look, I fall hard, Keith. Jeff is more skeptical. I want love. Jeff wants a date and a good night out. And yeah, I'm also drinking <laughs> something a lot harder than his Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get through the games. <laughs> uh, Keith Pompey, we look forward to seeing what you put out there. Jeff, you got anything else before we let him go? I already got you worked out about well, the schedule. I'd like, I'd like to know what the prediction is for, for Game 7. Oh, I got or do we have to wait for your column to get that? Nah, oh. I, got, I, I have Boston winning. I have Boston winning. Thanks, I Jeff. Do. Is it close? Is it close, or can we just Mother's Day we can <laughs> pass? Go let's plant some say, flowers instead of watching Sixers the Sixers game. May run out. The Sixers may run out of timeouts early. <laughs> it's like nah, nah I don't know. I, I I don't know. I think it could be close, but I just don't know, dude. I I lost some faith in them after last night. I should I shouldn't say that, but I had the rest I mean, of us did concerned. too. I just think it's going to be. I think they blew their opportunity. I mean, who knows? They can come out and, and show us something. And we're like, oh, you can never put a finger on this team. Because this team, let's keep it real. The Sixers are known. when they, You know what? The way that I feel the Sixers are going to win. Because what the Sixers are known for, they're known for when you believe and you have 100% confidence in them like Jason had. They stomp they on your heart. You down. <laughs> but then whenever you say, I'm done with them, and people are ready to burn the jerseys and do whatever, and then all of a sudden they win. That's so, been this whole but, series on text message for me with Jeff. Just this so, swing on the pendulum of emotions yeah. there. So, with that being said, the Sixers win Game Seven. All right, I'll take that. Right. Well, I'll leave it there. Well, then I'm going to ask you for one more prediction before you go. Uh-huh. If the Sixers do lose Game Seven, what are the odds that James Harden comes back next season? Uh man, yeah zero, but <laughs> yeah yeah zero. I don't think there's much chance he comes back, even if they do win. That's just that's just me, Keith Pompey. People can follow you at Pompey on Sixers. Read your stuff in the Inquirer. Thanks for always giving us some time, man. Uh, I don't know. Do I hope you get the early game? Whichever whichever leads to a Sixers game win is what I hope you get, Keith. Yeah, because I got this. I have a, a six o'clock flight the next morning, so I want the early game. All right, I want the early game. If the Sixers could honor Keith's plans, he'd appreciate that. Thanks, man. Have a good one. All right, thanks, y'all. Thanks for having me.